Also tonight, 56 arrested. Some claim they were attacked by police dogs. The climate change protesters go home, but are condemned by the climate secretary, Ed Miliband. A suicide bomber in Iran kills 31, the including six breakers. senior... 56 climate change protesters have been arrested during a two-day demonstration at a coal-fired power station in Nottinghamshire. Three police officers needed hospital treatment when a thousand demonstrators converged on Ratcliffe Power Station, where some were bitten by police dogs, they say. As our correspondent Nicholas Glass reports, each side engaged in its own PR tit-for-tat on the weekend's protest. <laughs> Dancing away along the road at the end of the demonstration. The tune, unless we're much mistaken, dueling banjos. The protesters seemed happy, painted faces and all, taking their time. Keep moving! Stop moving! Keep moving! Move. This is not a designated The police were impatient to keep them moving to reopen the road. There was a certain amount of friction along the way. I'm telling you, that's enough, all right? Can I ask? No. Yeah, stay there. Police dogs were brought in yesterday after three protesters climbed over the perimeter fence of the power station. The police seem to have avoided kettling the controversial tactic of marshalling demonstrators into confined spaces. 56 people were arrested in all. The police concede that some protesters received dog bites. I was just on the fence trying to um, protect the people that was going up and my buddy was um, stuck in by the police. Um, so I had my hands up like that and trying to get around, around him and um, they um, put the dog on me. The issue with police dogs is that police dogs bite people. They're there for crowd control. They act as a deterrent and when people come forward into the dog's space then they're likely to get bitten. None of our dogs were off their leashes and in fact one of our dogs got kicked and that protester has been arrested for kicking our animal. This weekend's demonstration played out on the ground and soon afterwards on the internet. This is video shot and edited by the protesters, all put to music and transmitted on the web on so-called Climate Camp TV. With everyone having a phone and access to a video camera, the modern demo has had to adapt. Protesters use the web and Twitter tactically and so do the police. Uh, Mayor White with a uh, black rucksack, he's doing it right in front of security now. Do you want to them this video is shot from a police helicopter. You hear the running commentary as they try to secure the fence. Just 45 seconds long, this is the only sequence police put on YouTube today for all to see. Thank you, Mike, Victor One. The police presence at Ratcliffe on Sur this weekend cost over half a million pounds. For the protesters, the intention was to keep the issue current. The UN Climate Summit is in Copenhagen in December. In London, the Climate Change Secretary Ed Miliband hosted a meeting of the 17 biggest greenhouse gas emitting countries ahead of December's Climate Change Summit in Copenhagen. The Major Economies Forum is an attempt to get progress on the issues of providing finance to developing countries and protecting forests amid speculation that hopes of an overall deal at Copenhagen may be faltering. Well, I've been speaking to Ed Miliband about the chances of that deal, but first asked him whether he had any sympathy with the Ratcliffe protesters. Well, I think the protesters at the power station are wrong to be taking uh, any kind of unlawful activity. And I don't think it's the way in a democracy that we should be uh, going at all. Uh, I think peaceful campaigning is fine and legitimate. But I think they're wrong also to be hopeless and defeatist about this, because actually I think there is a, a lot of reasons to be optimistic. When you think about the Copenhagen deadline, it has focused people's minds. So China has moved its position. India has moved its position. Japan has recently moved its position. There is a lot further to go, and there is a danger that we won't get a deal, but it's right that governments from around the world, as we're doing in London today and tomorrow, strain every sinew and throw everything at it to get a deal, because a lot does depend on it. But the, the, the protesters point out that you have called for a civil movement on climate change, and there is a proud tradition of civil disobedience, whether it's the suffragettes or, or anything else you know, that involves direct action. That's what they're doing. 
Well, I certainly haven't been calling for direct action as of the sort that they're doing. I've been very clear that we need peaceful uh, campaigning, uh, and that's the only kind of campaigning I think is legitimate in a democracy, and I'm very clear about that. But I think that there's too much defeatism around, to be honest, and I think too much defeatism, including from uh, uh, some of the people that you've been speaking to, because actually governments are making progress on these uh, issues. Governments are showing a willingness to act. Now, there is a lot further to go, and we need much greater ambition, and that's well, what this meeting is about. The but, Americans but, seem know, pretty uh, pessimistic at the moment. I mean, Todd Stern told us there is a, a real chance of no deal. There is a chance of, of no deal. Uh, he's right about that because there are huge issues to overcome. What are we trying to do?